am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, this is going to be more about the loser. We know who that is, DT. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Well, I can just imagine what kind of uh, trouble uh, Trump is uh, suffering in his brain for this amazing loss. Or maybe not. I mean, he's so deranged that this may seem like a win to him. He's completely able to convince himself that, um, you know, everything's great, everything's fine, but not really. He knows deep down. We got some glimpses into his psyche when um, uh, some people were reporting that when the uh, January 6th attack was going on, he was panicked, but at the same time, uh, insisted on watching it all on television, hoping that they would overtake the uh, government and then he would be um, supreme leader. So we'll see uh, how this is affecting Trump's psyche. This is going to be a real quick video uh, just to see what's going on in his broken little brain. But before we do too much of that, let's have just a moment of meditation. Okay, broken Donald Trump. What's gonna happen with him? You know, it's interesting regarding his uh, uh, legal woes, he's um, had a few, if you wanna call them successes, in that uh, several of those cases have whittled down the charges to just the very most um, sustainable charges, the ones that won't be in question. And uh, so you would think that's a win for him, but in the end, it's not, because that means that once the uh, judgment has been passed, he won't have those, um, you know, sketchy points of um, conviction that might be overturned. So all of that is kind of clear, the decks are cleared, and only the very choicest uh, uh, <laughs> charges are left against him. So let's see with just three cards if we can figure out where Trump's uh, psyche is right now. So three cards for Trump, his brain, what in the world is going through that brain? You know he's very clever and so if nothing else he's planning escape and backup. The Fool, New Journey. So the Fool card indicates going on a new journey and I have to say, the fool perfectly describes Donald Trump. So yeah, he is planning the next step. Maybe the next step out. Um, the next card is the Ten of Cups, which is like happy family. It's uh, a lot of emotional situation. So he's moving the whole, his whole family. Will Melania go with him? Will Barry go with him? And then the last one, is the five, six, seven, eight of cups, which is leaving something behind of emotional importance, Mar-a-Lago, and his life in the United States. Yeah, he's going out. Let's do three more cards to see, is he going to leave the United States? Will Donald Trump leave the United States? Okay, one, two, three. Is Donald Trump going to leave the United States? First card. Okay, so the Queen of Cups. Again, this is very uh, emotional, but this is a Queen card. The Queen uh, indicates some uh, degree of um, confidence over these emotions. 
The next card is the Chariot moving fast. And the last card is the Nine of Cups, which is wanting to show his wares. Yeah, I can see. We'll read the whole thing over. As a matter of fact, let's do this whole thing as if it were a uh, dyadic cross. So it will come out in the, in the order which they were originally laid, which would be the signifier card being he's the fool, so he's, he's comp kind of certainly contemplating a move, or he's going to definitely make a move. Uh, the ch uh, challenge to that, ah, is familial uh, ties, emotional familial ties uh, to the United States. Uh, the baseline of that is wanting to show his uh, emotional wares, or, yeah, mm -hmm. wanted to do a trophy of his uh, emotional uh, wins. Uh, the past of this, ah, in this case, the past of this, being in charge of your of your emotions or the, the, uh, the, the situation around you is gone. In the sky of this, the chariot, yeah, it's already started to happen quickly. And the final outcome, being the Nine of Cups, is that his tell will be wanting to shop kind of his emotional value around the world. Let's get um, the last four cards and make this a Celtic cross. I want to wind these up though again and say, how is this working out for Trump? One is the very uh, definition of that question is the three of swords. And the three of swords is a, is a broken heart. Isn't that interesting? So a lot of disappointment. Next card, the environment that that's in is being chained to lesser intention. Of course it is. The devil card. Uh, hopes and the fears for all of this is justice, but it's his justice. He's believing honestly in his brain that he has been dealt an injustice. And then the final outcome, look at this, the nine of coins. And this is a privileged person. So he's going to be able to facilitate an escape, looks like to me. Let's do another quick draw on whether um, his family, which means his wife and his minor son, will be accompanying him on this escape. Will his wife, I don't want to say her name, will his wife and his minor son accompany him in this escape. Four cards. One, two, three, four, because I feel like it's going to be two cards for her and two cards for the minor son on her. So the five, six, seven, eight of uh, coins is practicing your craft. No, she's been practicing for this. She's been storing away her value, okay? Uh, waiting for, for when this can happen. And then the Wheel of Fortune. It's uh, just a matter of time. The sun is, no, it's a complete end of the relationship with that sun. And the 567 is a um, theft and betrayal, or yeah, theft and betrayal. So, Interesting. So for Melania, said the name, no, she has been storing up her her value. Okay, she's got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight million dollars at least put away, and I'm sure she has tens of millions of dollars put away. And uh, is this wheel of fortune is just waiting for this to land before she makes that move? As far as his his youngest uh, child. No, this is an end of that relationship. That relationship, done. And uh, the seven is, uh, wow, theft and betrayal. He will feel, uh, to some extent, like that child being removed from his grasp is theft and betrayal by her. So the family will split up. He'll be without her and the boy. And he will be, oh, let's see what country he'll be in. Let's do that. Will he be in a uh, in a Spanish-speaking country, or will he be in some other country? Because I think he will be in a Spanish-speaking country. Will he be in a Spanish-speaking country too? I got three cards here. Okay. Will Trump be in a Spanish-speaking country? 
Emperor, yes. Ace of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And the Nine of Cups. He has a, somewhere he can display his uh, emotional value. Yes, he will be in some sort of a, a Spanish-speaking country. The reason I say this is because I'm, I'm trying to think in my brain what um, it has to be Latin American countries or uh, will, or even Caribbean countries, uh, will be his his savior it'll be somewhere where that leader has a grip on that country as strong as an emperor i wonder if it could be venezuela um uh the ace of swords is that he will submit to the rules of that country and um and this nine of cups is a place where he can uh, openly display his emotional uh value um to them well, he continued to scream and shout from that other country. Knight of Swords, yeah. He will continue to fight for what he thinks is his truth. Very interesting. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, hmm, she's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought has gone into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing and i love using these cards a lot they've got a sort of a an antique uh kind of patina to the cards i mean it's not really a patina because it's fake but you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh fun to use and they're beautiful cards and you know what the reason i do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh full decks of tarot cards very often at least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards and uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot.